Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Before we look at the other issue earlier advertised, let's look at the very important subject matter of COVID-19. Of course, the global community um, has been doing everything they can um, to protect their citizens, especially with the um, highly transmissible uh, Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Well, the mandatory face coverings in public places and uh, other COVID rules have now been dropped uh, by the United Kingdom starting from today. Uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson had announced that when he appeared uh, before the parliament last week, a prime minister also said uh, the government would immediately drop its advice for people to work from home. And that's a, a major one. It's advice for people to work from home. The prime minister said England uh, was reverting to plan A due to boosters and how people had followed Plan B measures. Um, he also told MPs, uh, scientists uh, believed that the Omicron wave had uh, peaked nationally. Uh, we're now being joined live from London by resident of Thames Mead, London, Mr. Insikagabasi Aquera Amos. Uh, Mr. Amos, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning, thank you for having me. This is a major um, announcement by the Prime Minister of uh, the UK, Boris Johnson. Um, is this coming from a place of facts, do you think, and the real situation on the ground? Or is he trying to buy some public, public support based on his travails? Um, of course, the inquiry into his conduct and the conduct of his office during uh, the lockdown. Absolutely. I think uh, the whole rhetoric of the whole thing is basically trying to buy him some public support by removing the masks. Um, if you ask me, um, lately, uh, studies have showed in the last um, that the compliance levels for wearing masks in public places and communal areas have dropped by every major peak. What that, what that means is uh, the level of compliance has dropped. So for me, how would this make any sort of difference? So I think it's just a gimmick of his to try and buy some sort of public support. But I think it's a little bit too early because if you look at the rates of infection, particularly in London where we live, it is actually plateaued. It's not really, uh, it has not actually dipped. It's just sort of a little bit, of, uh, a dip a little bit, but it's not something that you could trigger an action shot as removing the mask. So uh, for me, I think it's a little bit too early. Hmm. Okay, so, so what are your thoughts on this uh, liberty? It feels like it's a liberty... Uh to not respecting this protocol, do you think it's okay with the fact that this is, you know, a serious global concern? Yeah, there's there so many facts uh, to it. Number one, uh, the wearing of the masks. Uh, many organizations have come out uh, right after Boris Johnson announced to say that, well, the guidance for wearing masks has been removed, but we strongly advise the use of masks in communal areas. We've got so many... Uh, transport companies, you've got so many um, retailers coming out to tell you that they have not completely accepted the embrace the idea of uh, removal of masks entirely. So that tells you that people are taking them, the PM's word with a little pinch of salt because there is no basis, there are no scientific basis for him completely teaching the mask as if I... Um. Um, uh, Mr. Quero, what, what exactly is the difference uh, between the Plan A and Plan B measures? You know, of course, we're hearing that uh, uh, he, uh, Boris Johnson, is saying the public had successfully followed Plan B measures, reverting to Plan A. W what's the difference for those of you who are there? Uh, yeah, for us, it's, 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 it's massive. Uh, it's not really clear, but it's massive. For instance, we are legally required to work from home uh, during the Plan B. Uh, that is no longer a requirement. So that is a big, big difference. This hospitality uh, industry will actually be jumping up and down right now by that announcement because that means that they can go about their businesses without um, any sort of uh, restrictions in place or access, complete access to all sort of clubs, nightclubs, pubs and all that. So the, basically you can, you can tell, you can understand the basis for this decision. It's purely business and not really scientific, if you ask me. It's purely driven by business. So um, he's been uh, showed from the beginning that he's listened to the business side of things a little bit more than the, uh, the sage, as it were. So, yes, I completely uh, agree with that fact. So, on Sikhanabasi, do you see um, people complying? Would you be wearing the nose max? Uh, what do you really think? Are people already, uh, you know, taking that to consideration, not working from home, among others? 
for instance, I work from one and but when I have to go to the hybrid, we are currently doing a sort of um, what's it called hybrid. So you work a few days in the office and a few days at home. The guidance for wearing masks in the office has not changed. The guidance for wearing masks in the bus stays, public uh, transport, uh, the train, the rails has not changed. People still wear masks. So exactly how does this impact the life and culture of people? It has little or no impact. Um, compliance levels have naturally dropped because uh, people have seemed to be compliant with wearing masks generally. So that will not suddenly change. But I don't think that it will have any sort of massive difference because, to be honest, I still wear masks. People, mm -hmm. you notice the compliance level has to do a lot with the age brackets as well. The older you are, the more likely you are to comply with wearing masks. The younger you are, for instance, um, you're talking about the, the guys in the millennials, for instance, they don't give a flying hoot about wearing masks generally. So, but do you think? Yeah. Do you also think that this might, um, you know, go well with some of the, uh, what well, you want to call it, the conspiracy theories around, especially in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole, as regards the entire, because a lot of people still think that, you know, the COVID-19 and Omicron is just a hoax. And so with this decision and with the policy coming from the United Kingdom, <coughs> does this might just <laughs> really go to justify that COVID doesn't really exist. It's just uh, some political power play here. Well, uh <laughs> the conspiracy theorist, uh, sadly, it's, it's, it's disappointing because for me, I've had close friends, uh, I've had colleagues in Nigeria, I've had a close friend from Nigeria die of COVID case, all because we don't believe that COVID is real. This is what most um, TV stations should make people understand. Uh, the fact that we don't have, um, you know, sophisticated healthcare services to be able to track, monitor these things, does not rule out the fact that, that COVID does not exist. It is real. People have had it. People have been hospitalized for it. People have died for it. So died with it. And so we need to we need to desensitize people from thinking that COVID is some sort of conspiracy to to I don't know what to, I don't know what to call it. it it's the same. It, it's the same drive that uh, prevents people from taking vaccinations as well because they don't believe that it's real. So they don't believe that the vaccination is meant for it. It is a lie. It is a lie. COVID is real. And this message needs to be passed across to African countries and nations at large. Okay. Th thank you very much. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, um, in one sentence, what's the reaction of the public basically to this move? In one sentence, please. Indifferent. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You used one word. I appreciate that. And Sikagaba Sequere is joining us live from uh, Things Made in London, United Kingdom, giving us analysis of the latest move by the United Kingdom government uh, to relax some of the restrictions placed on the public as part of measures to curb the spread of COVID-19 in that part of the world. Thank you very much for your time. Mercy. Uh, we have to move on on the breakfast this morning. Yes, uh, hopefully. All right, we do appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully when we return, we head straight to the third conversation where we look at the issue of uh, the cost of fail subsidy for 2022.